Hello and welcome! Today I want to talk about one of my favorite books. Carrie by Stephen King. Who are you to talk about Stephen King, I hear you say. My name is Anne and I'm a book junkie. <laughs> if you don't know who Stephen King is, may I dare ask, have you been living under a rock? I'm sure you know Stephen King and I'm sure you know that Carrie was his first novel published. So throwing it out, Tabitha, his wife, found it and read it and told him it's good and told him to keep on writing because it's good. The book was published in 1974. About 40-something years later I came upon the movie Kari um, and later I found out it was actually a remake. So I watched Chloe Grace Moretz's unconvincing portrayal of Kari that I read the book. <laughs> and then I watched the original movie starring CC Spacek. Sorry, I had to fix the lighting. Hey. So let's talk about this book. Every time I read the first novel of a writer, <laughs> I could tell it was their first book. It's a little amateur, a little predictable, and a little mediocre compared to the next books. Usually, so don't come for me. When I read Carrie, I got no newbie vibes at all. The writing was so mature and so strong right from the beginning, right from the very first page. It had no chapters and that was a little confusing I think at first, but I loved how it went back and forth in time from current events to the book Susnell wrote, to the incident when Kari was three years old, then to an excerpt from a newspaper article. The narrative was all over the place and we get viewpoints from so many characters. It was quite an experience for such a small book. I mean, compared to the rest of Stephen King's book. I mean, have you read it? There is no doubt that Stephen King is an amazing writer and he's definitely someone I look up to. I wish I could write half as good as His Majesty. So the story follows a teenager, Harry White who is not that popular in school, and she's considered somewhat an ugly duckling. Her mother is super religious, she has lost her father, she has no friends, and she has some powers. The story begins when Carrie gets her first period and thinks that she thinks that something is something bad is happening to her because people are not supposed to bleed like that. The girls at school make fun of her and start throwing tampons and sanitary pads at her. The girls get punished from their teacher while Carrie at home gets punished from her mother because her mother believes that only sinners get periods just as only sinners get breasts. Biology. Anyway, Sue Snell one of the girls at the tampon incident feels guilty about what happened, so she asks her boyfriend, Tommy, to take Carrie to the prom. And so he does. He asks Carrie, she accepts. Even though she's a little bit scared about the whole thing, she thinks maybe it's going to be a prank because she is so used to the other kids being awful to her. Tommy, however, is really nice. He's so nice that at some point even Sue is a little bit afraid he might fall in love with her after all. In the meantime, Chris Har Hargensen, another girl from the tampon incident, is so pissed she got punished that she is now looking for revenge. Along with her boyfriend and a couple of other boys, they kill a pig, drain its blood somehow, fill packets with it, and place them right above the stage where the king and queen of the prom would be standing. Of course, Carrie and Tommy win king and queen. I mean, queen and king. When they get up on stage, Chris and her boyfriend dump the packet and blood splashes all over them. One of the packets even hits Tommy on the head and sadly kills him. Nobody notices at first because they are all preoccupied laughing and Carrie thinks that they're laughing with her. She thinks that the whole school was in on it. She unleashes her powers and starts killing everybody. Uh, however, we as the reader, we know that actually that whole incident wasn't actually meant for her. The prank was just Chris's revenge to the school. <laughs> she wasn't trying to get to Carrie specifically and the rest of the people 
They were laughing because they thought it was funny uh, to see some white bright eyes ogled on top of red blood, like there were the white eyes and everything else was red and they thought that was funny, so they just started laughing. They weren't laughing because they thought the prank was funny. So after Carrie kills everyone in the school, she goes on to take out the whole town and Finally, she goes home to her mother, feeling sorry for herself, feeling that her mother was the only person who was really trying to protect her against all the sinners. This is so sad. But she goes home to find her mother, who is also pissed at Kari, and tries to kill her. So much emotion. But Kari kills her mother instead. But she gets wounded in the process. Then she goes to find Chris and her boyfriend and she puts the roadhouse where they were staying on fire. And then Billy, uh, Chris's boyfriend, and Chris, they try to run Carrie over with the car, but Carrie uses her powers to flip the car over and kills them both. There is so much death in such a small book. It's only like 300 pages. <sighs> so, after all of that, she feels kind of tired and she lies down on the road. So at that moment, Sue Snell from the beginning, who felt bad, remember? She finds her and stays with her until she dies. And somehow at this point, Sue connects with Kari and finds out what it's like to die. This is so scary. If I'm not mistaken, there's a pattern with Kari. Somehow she gets inside people's head. Some sort, may, maybe it's part of the t telekinesis, or maybe it's some extra psychic powers. I don't know. But there was Sue who found her and somehow felt what she was feeling. And there was a man who testified in court after the incident, who kind of knew what Kari was thinking when he saw her. I get the feeling, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I get the feeling that it was the same thing at the prom too, when Kari walked inside and everybody looked at her and thought about how beautiful she was uh, compared to how she usually looked. I feel like there's a shadow of psychic powers besides telekinesis that Carrie demonstrated along the story. That's just how I understood it. Um, I really like the part that we see Carrie through different stages practicing her powers, like trying to lift a brush, even though her mother thinks that those powers come from Satan. I also love the fact that His Majesty used genetics and biology to explain how Kari got the powers. And I also loved the book's ending so much more than the movies. In the movies, Kari dies um, by burying herself and her mother in the house with a shower of rocks. This very thing happens in the book too, but when Kari was actually three years old, she was chatting with a neighbor who was sunbathing and wearing a bikini or of some sort, and her mother punished her for that. Like, she was three years old. So, three-year-old Kari made it rain. Rocks. After this book haunted me, it was in my mind every single time I put it down and went to do something else, it was inside my head. After I finished reading it, I gave it to my sister and I told her, this is something you need to read. She took it with her on her vacation and when she came back, she told me that she was also haunted by it. She said she would go for a swim and envision scenes from the book. I'm telling you, either Stephen King is a great, great, great writer or he's a wizard casting spells on us. So we can't put his books down. I can't put his books down. But I guess we'll never find out. So make sure to like this video if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe for more book reviews. Bye!